Yo, Elliot. Yo, it's Elliot with Yo, Elliot, and today we're back with a question from our buddy Alex, who happens to be a talented quitter. Alex goes on to say, Elliot, I'm from Canada, I'm in a university, I'm studying philosophy, my life has changed a lot over the past year. Since my parents split up, I moved out of my home and moved multiple times. I broke up with my high school sweetheart. I've been alone a lot, which isn't easy, but I've never felt better about where I am today. Wow, that's wonderful. I'm starting up my own website to share my poetry and writing. I've been active in my community. My thoughts have never been sharper or my body healthier. However, I have this constant fear of suddenly becoming disinterested in my writing. He says, this has happened before, many times. In high school, I was the best saxophone player and put all my effort into being the best jazz musician possible. But then I became disinterested and quit. Before that, I played rugby and was a star player on the provincial team, but I lost interest and quit. These are just a couple of examples. My relationships have been affected by this also. As all of a sudden I feel I can't bear to do something or be with somebody, I just leave my coaches, leave my teachers or my pair, peers or my girlfriends with no warning. I felt much guilt over this. It continues to occur, though it only happens in smaller degrees or larger degrees now and then. Although I understand the process of finding oneself and that it's natural, I'm having trouble investing myself into things I love, my writing, my school, relationships, because I don't know if I will love them tomorrow. So Elliot, can you give me advice? Alex, great question, Alex. Thank you for sharing that with us. The very first thing, dude, that drew my attention was the correlation between the breakup and the dismemberment of your family and this uh, breakup and dismemberment of your lifestyle, you know? So it seems to be sort of a pattern maybe that was taught to you, right? Mom and dad, get excited about shit, marriage, and decide, well, not for me, right? So that it may just be a fruit of a particular environment that you grew up in where people make commitments to things and quit. And, uh, if that's the case, which it may very well be, we're going to talk about a lot of really cool things that you can do to break yourself of those unresourceful patterns that uh, oftentimes were given or shown to us by our parents. So you come from a family of quitters. Don't blame yourself. That's the first thing, dude. Now, let me get into my bullet points because I actually have some advice here for you, bro. The very first thing I would do is say, make more mistakes. Make more of them. Go deep into all these things that you love, 100%. Go hard into each one of these areas as you have, and when it's time to quit, quit. No guilt. Everything that you've done up until now is fine. It's perfectly fine. You played rugby until it was time to quit, so you fucking quit. It was, you, you were good in, uh, with a saxophone. You were great. You played well. You were the best. When it's time to quit, you fucking quit. No judgment. You see, when you start making judgments about your past, things you've done, start evaluating it, that's when you start having the guilt because you start putting a moral judgment on things that happen spontaneously. And if you quit, that means it was time for you to quit and just be okay with it, right? Moving on, right? We don't want to now start judging that as something negative and then bringing only half of our ass to the things that we do, right? And that's what you're starting to experience now. You're going out and venturing again into new territory, i.e. your poetry and whatnot, right? You've done this in relationships. And you're starting to be apprehensive, dude. That's a weak place to come from. What happened to the hard guy that was winning in, on the rugby field and winning with the saxophone and winning with his girlfriend? Now you're tippy-toeing because of some Past hiccups? Mm -mm -mm, bro. If your heart is guiding you towards poetry, go full bore into poetry. Go hardcore into poetry. Give 110% into poetry. And when it's time to quit, quit. No judgment. 
Now, you might want to start being a little self-aware about the quitting, right? So first step is don't stop judging yourself. Forgive yourself. And if you're going to quit in the future, guarantee you're going to quit in the future. Let's say that. Guaranteed you're going to quit in the future. So what? Just be okay with that. That's the very first thing. Now, let's take a step back and look at what happens right around the time you decide to quit something, right? Because what would, what would cause you to quit something is resistance, right? Resistance, like you're describing, you know, um, uh, in, your, in, your, in your question. You talk about going into the process of doing something and then all of a sudden it, you start to resent it. You don't want to do it. You leave your coaches, so on and so forth. Well, there may be signs. There may be recurring themes, right? That you begin to notice that are associated with when you quit shit, right? For some people, simple people, where it's easy for, when things get a little tough, they quit. Right? Rugby gets a little tough, I got a bruise on my elbow, I quit, right? They're, they're quitters for their own reasons, namely because, you know, maybe he's a punk. For you, though, there may be some internal resistance. You just start, might, might start resenting the person, the place, or the thing out of nowhere, right? Seemingly out of nowhere. Start taking notice as to time frame. Hmm, it always seems to happen around the, the one year mark. Just notice that way when a year cr creeps up and it's time for you to start quitting again, you could say, wait a second, I see this bad boy coming. I see it coming. I'm starting to feel this resistance to my writing, this resistance to my girlfriend, this resistance to this thing that I chose and I went hardcore for. All of a sudden, I'm getting resistance and resistance is very physical. You might think it's that your brain starts telling you stories, but those stories all are formulated to support the feeling. Feelings first. The feeling comes up first. So you start noticing, boy, I'm having certain feelings uh, that are icky, right? You don't even have to judge them. Icky, bad feelings around this thing and I don't want to do it anymore. Begin to rec pattern recognition, my friend. That would be the easiest thing to begin to notice. No judgment. Be a fucking scientist about this. Scientists don't judge. They don't feel anything about it. They don't, they don't have guilt. Scientists look and they watch and they wait and they pay attention and they document. Document yourself. Become a scientific investigator into your own character. That's really what being the strongest version of yourself is all about. That's what I'm talking about in these videos most of the time. Be self-aware. Be self-objective. Pay attention to yourself so that you can make adjustments based on what's resourceful and what's not. So what else did I put here? Uh, look, when the resistance comes up, it might be a good idea to take a break, right? So you're starting to grow, you're having resistance and uh, resentment towards writing, right? Let me slow down for a minute and help you out here. When that rises, you may even begin to take notice and realize, oh boy, you know, this, this thing is happening at a very predictable time. Good. Now you don't have to fix it. There's resistance coming up. It's been a year, the resistance is coming up. No need to fix it, just take a break. Don't judge the thing that you're breaking up with. Don't judge yourself for needing a break. Just take a break. Right? I mean, I've got thousands of examples for myself, one including making YouTube videos. Right? I had some resistance to making videos for a, bit, for a, long, for a little while there. That's why I quit. Never once did I judge YouTubers. Never once did I judge myself for quitting. All I did was give myself the space and the compassion to say, I need a break from something I love. I know, so this is where you, you gotta start thinking bigger and ultimately you will, thinking longer term, right? I'm not a long term guy, right? I'm a two pump chump. I'm a spark, boom, and I'm done. As I'm aging, right? And that's why I'm kind of like a big brother to a lot of you guys, I'm a little bit older. I'm starting to recognize um, that it's resourceful to think years down the line. So I'll leave you with this. When it comes to your writing or anything that you're going to do that you can logically see or emotionally invest yourself into uh, becoming something fruitful later on, 
You can see it in your mind, like, yeah, I'm going to be a writer. I can see how writing is something that's going to fulfill my joy in life and fill my bank account, right? We should always be thinking in terms of safety, security, and self-expression moving into the future. And if said career, vocation, relationship looks like something that you might want to have for the future, well then you simply recommit. No judgment at all. You're allowed to go back, right? You're allowed to go back to the saxophone, dude. If all of a sudden, a year from now, two years from now, 10 years from now, you hear saxophone jazz music on the radio and you decide you want to pick up a saxophone, pick the shit up. You might just love it again. You don't know. 20 years from now, you might decide, boy, it's time for me to get back into rugby. You created a break. You have no animosity towards it. You have no judgment to yourself. It's still there. It's waiting for you. Rugby ain't going nowhere. Writing ain't going nowhere. And for me, YouTube ain't going nowhere. Done.